Yo, what's up, Akuo? Welcome back. If this is your first time here, I'm so glad you're tuning in. I know that God will meet you exactly where you're at. My name is Abel. I'm your worship leader here, and I have a quick question for you guys. Everyone who's watching, it's usually in the morning, but in the afternoon, it still applies. How do you drink your coffee? And if you don't drink coffee, that's perfectly fine. Type in your favorite beverage that gets you going in the morning and the afternoon. If you need a burst of energy, type that in there. But I'm just very curious. People take their coffee very personally. I know a few people that work at coffee shops and they're like, man, people are nuts. People like my mom that want seven creams, seven sugars specifically every single time. And it just cracks me up. I drink mine just straight up, just black as long as it's hot and in a cup. I'm good to go. But as you guys are doing that, welcome everyone else, and we're going to jump into worship. So come on, let's go. All right, let's sing this out, guys. I was an orphan lost at the fall, running away when I'd hear you call. But Father, you worked your way. I had no righteousness of my own I had no right to draw near your throne But Father, you loved me still And in love before you laid the world's foundation You predestined to adopt me as your own You have raised me up so high above my station I'm a child of God by grace and grace alone. Oh. Take that true thing, guys. It's by nothing that we did. It's only by Jesus coming down and leaving his throne for us. Come on, let's sing this. You left your home to seek out the lost. You knew the great and terrible cause. But Jesus, your face was set. And I worked my fingers down to the bone But nothing I did could ever atone But Jesus, you paid my debt By your blood I have redemption and salvation Lord, you died that I might reap what you have sown And you rose that I might be a new creation I am born again by grace and grace alone I was in darkness all of my life I swore I knew the day from the night Spirit, you made me see I swore I knew the way on my own Head full of rocks, a heart made of stone Spirit, you moved in me And at your touch, my sleeping spirit was awakened On my darkened heart, the light of Christ has shown Caught into a kingdom that cannot be shaken Heaven citizen by grace and grace alone so I'll stand in faith by grace and grace alone. I will run the race by grace and grace alone. I will slay my sin by grace and grace alone. I will reach the end by grace and grace alone. only by your grace it's only by his grace guys I want us to take that truth in there's no amount of work there's no good deeds that could ever impress him enough to get us into heaven it's only by the blood that Jesus shed and that makes him so worthy of all of our praise Worthy of every single song we could ever sing to him. Everything. Our entire lives. So let's sing this out. 
worthy. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Sing Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Sing worthy. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. You are worthy. You are worthy. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. And oh, there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me There is no one like you, there is 
not beside you Open up my eyes in wonder Show me who you are And lead me with your heart And lead me in your love To those around me And I will build my life Upon your love It is a firm foundation And I will put my trust In you alone And I will not be shaken And I will build my life Upon your love It is a firm foundation And I will put my trust In you alone And I will not be shaken So Father, I ask that you lead us in your love to our families, to our communities, to those around us, Lord. Most importantly, lead us in your love to you. Teach us to love you. Teach us to trust you. That when the world gets crazy, when things get chaotic, we have a firm foundation on who you are, Jesus. Not on what we do, but on the promises that you have given us. So Father, I just pray that you speak to us today. You bless all the families represented here right now. The best that we know how, we choose to worship and lay down our lives at your feet, Jesus. So we love you, we praise you, and we pray all these things in your mighty, precious name, in the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said, Amen. You guys, Enjoy the rest of the service. All right, great to be with you guys once again. Right now, we are finishing our fourth and final section of this series called Learn To. Now this entire series has been based around the four L's of Akuo, which are the ways we will be in community with Jesus and one another. Those four L's of Akuo are listen to God, love people, lead by empowering, and link to our community. Guys, this has been such an incredible season for us. What we have been seeing time and again here at Akuo is that when things get tough, we have been banding together. We know that with the onset of this global pandemic, people have been in need more than ever. So we have stepped up. Akuo Church, you have stepped up. Over the last few weeks, we have shown up and served more than 450 people at Christian Assistance Ministry. We were able to help families get clothes for everyday use and food for their Thanksgiving meals. Our church alone was able to buy 25 turkeys for the families that were standing in line that day. Today, we are doing a drive here at the church, and we've been asking for gifts for teens and tweens, and we've been asking for blankets to make sure our needy senior citizens in our neighborhood have something to keep them warm. You guys are taking care of the blankets, and we are hooking them up with coffee mugs and hot chocolate. Together, we can bring people into community with Jesus and with one another. Together, we can listen to God, love people, lead by empowering, and link to our community. If we can do this, if we can get this right, we can change things here in our neighborhoods and here in our city for the better. Now, what's really crazy is that these four L's of Akua were just kind of like handed to me by God. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'll never forget that moment, that day. I was driving my car going from I-10 to I-35. You know, I was taking that ramp that kind of curves from the left to the right. And as that's curving, you kind of see the downtown skyline. 
And I was just kind of looking at it as I was turning and just all of a sudden it hit me. Uh, God told me that we are going to be a church that listens to God, loves people, and leads in our community, which will later be broken down uh, further to leading by empowering and linking to our community. Now, when I look back on those initial times, uh, I had the chance to wrestle with these ideas. I just kind of accepted them, right? There, there wasn't much more than that. They just fit into this easy way to lay out for people that were interested in the church when they asked, what are you guys going to do? Uh, and, and I didn't really think of much more of it than that. However, as we've been going through this series, something has been happening while we've been going through this deep dive. I've been seeing how these four L's aren't just like four standalone things. What they do is actually flow back and forth and connect to one another perfectly. Uh, and I want to show you guys how all of this fits together. So we'll start at the beginning. Uh, we'll start with listen to God. Uh, the start of all this, right? The start of my relationship with God, your relationship with God, the, the start of this church. It all begins with listening to God. Now, it might not always be an audible voice. There might be a prompting. It might be as simple as like, oh man, I feel like I'm supposed to do this thing over here and, and I don't know why. Uh, no matter what it is, we are all capable of listening to God. Jesus would literally shout at crowds about this. Let's take a look at what it says here in John 7. There it says, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink, for the scriptures declare rivers of living water will flow from his heart. Now, when he said living water, he was speaking of the Spirit, who would be given to everyone believing in him. But the Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet entered into his glory. So through Jesus, we are able to receive this Holy Spirit, which is one of the three parts of the Holy Trinity. The idea of the Holy Trinity is that there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, each one of these is fully and eternally God, while also being its own distinct being, so separate from the other three. Now, all of that to say is that through Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit within us. So essentially, through believing in Jesus, we have a peace of God living within us at all times. That's like one part of God living within us at all times. Long gone are the days of the only way of being able to communicate with God is by walking in the garden with him. You see, Jesus brought the garden to each and every one of us. We can all reach God. The intersection between heaven and earth now resides within all of us believers. It is through this intersection that we have access to all the spiritual gifts that are mentioned in the Bible. It's through this intersection that we have access to the voice of God. And it's through this intersection that we are able to speak and listen to God. It's because of this access that we have to God that we have responsibility connected to it. If we are the intersection of heaven and earth, that we have to live it out right. We have to live it out right. And the first way we can do that is by loving, which brings us to our second L, love people. Jesus laid this idea out about as clearly as possible. You see, one day these religious leaders were trying to get Jesus to trip up so they could throw him in jail or have him killed or something like that. So they were peppering Jesus with all kinds of questions. And when they finally asked this last one, they said, what is the most important commandment. So here in Mark 12, you can see how Jesus replied. There he says, the most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. So we are to love the Lord with all our hearts, souls, minds, and strength. Now, what's really cool about this is the Greek word that is used here for love is agapao, which is the kind of love you choose to give. So not only do we need to make the choice to get up every single day and love God with all of our hearts, souls, minds, and strength, but we have to choose to love our neighbors as well. These are the greatest commandments. So every single day, we need to choose love. For us, we have to get this right. Jesus said we need to choose to love God. And that means when things are hard, we need to choose to love God. When the world is against us, we have to remember God is there and choose to love him with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, and all our strength. We also have to choose to love him when things are good, which we can forget about, right? When everything's going smooth, we forget to choose to love God. 
Either way, there's nothing greater than choosing to love God. Now, there is something as great as choosing to love God, and that's loving people, choosing to love people. Not just people that love us, but the people that hate us, the people that we don't like. We got to love them too. And here's how Jesus explains that idea in Matthew 5. You've heard the law that says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you'll be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. If you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. So you get no bonus points for loving the people that show love to you. That's what you're supposed to do. That's easy stuff. What we're called to do by Jesus is love the people that don't love us. We are called to love those that even persecute us. We're supposed to pray for them. It doesn't matter how much they disagree with you or how much they might be against you. You still have to love them. Now, that doesn't mean totally agreeing with everything they do or even allowing them to harm you. But that does mean praying for them, constantly praying for them. Because one day, that love that you show towards them might be enough of a reflection of God's love, and it might help them see how much they are loved by our Heavenly Father. Then they might come to you to learn about Jesus. Now, when that happens... You will need to lead. You'll need to lead them by empowering them, which is our third L in the four L's of Akuo. So what does leading by empowering look like? How do we lead someone else? Well, you lead like Jesus. We want you to strive to lead people in the same way Jesus led people while he was here on the earth. Now here's a great way to see Jesus's leadership at work. Let's take a look at Mark 10. And calling them to himself, Jesus said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great men exercise authority over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you shall be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you shall be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many." Now, this is one of my favorite pieces of scripture right here. Jesus has his disciples disciples gathered around him and he says, you see how power works around here. You see all that. That's not how it's supposed to be done. Jesus let them know that if you want to be a leader, you got to serve. If you want to be the one who is considered the best leader, then you need to act like a slave to everyone. For anyone in that group that had doubts about doing this, Jesus laid it out for them like this. He says, I'm God. I'm the son of man. And I didn't even come to be served. I came to serve. So what are you going to do? Because like, how do you argue against that, right? Like if Jesus acted in this way, then we need to do the exact same thing. For sure, we are no greater than Jesus. So we shouldn't ask for anything more than he got, right? Jesus didn't come down from heaven for a bunch of people to wait on him hand and foot. No, Jesus came down to serve. And you can see how he did that time and again. It was something that the disciples took to heart and carried out the best that they could. After Jesus was gone, the apostle Paul wrote this in the letter to the Hebrews. In chapter 10, Paul says this, Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. You see, Paul was encouraging the people to love each other and treat others well. Show good works toward your fellow man. Encourage all the people around you because when you do that, it motivates others to do the same. Lead them by empowering them. Give them a good example and then send them on their way to do the same. This is what we're doing in this season at Akuo. You can do this. You can be someone that makes a difference in this community. You can be a leader. You can link to the community. That's our fourth L. That is the goal 
of all these events and these drives that we've been doing during our season of linking. We want to give you opportunities to link to your community alongside your, your Akuo brothers and sisters, right? That's a great way for us to do things. But also, we want to motivate all of you to show acts of love and good works on your own. We want you to link to this community with us, and we also want you to link to the community on your own. Because when we are more than just a kuo, when we are a community of people all over the city doing the work of God, we can get way more done. We can get more done than just waiting on the handful of times a year we can get together and link to our community. When we start moving in the right direction, amazing things can start happening. Let's take a look at the book of Acts. Here is what it says in chapter 2. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who are being saved. Now this is what we're trying to do here at Akuo. We want to have people teaching and fellowship to be happening and the Lord's Supper to be shared. We just did it this past Wednesday at our Zoom Bible study. We want you guys to be connected to God and be listening to Him so well that you are able to perform many signs and wonders. We want you to be loving people. We want you to share everything that we have, that you have with one another. We don't want people in our community to go without that's why today we're donating toys and blankets for people that need them. We might not have a temple that we are able to meet at every day. But remember, Jesus came to build the temple within us all. We are the new intersection of heaven and earth, just like the temple was back in the day. We don't need that temple anymore. We can have fellowship and share meals and praise God for the goodwill of other people around us. That's what I want for all of you. Now I get it, we're in the middle of a global pandemic, but there are ways where we can do these things safely. We can meet on Zoom or have a phone call or have a physically distanced chat with someone in their front yard. There are plenty of ways for us to be with one another in safe ways, even in the middle of a global pandemic. Now for the folks in Acts, more and more people were saved and more people became a part of the community because of how they treated each other. This is how they represented, them, represented themselves to the community, and people were saved every single day. They became the cheese man of God, right? That's why we exist. We want to get people into our community, sure, but we want people in community with Jesus. We want our church to grow for sure, but we don't exist for the building of, of Akuo, for the building of this kingdom. We don't even exist for like a worship session. We are hands and feet. We are the people that are going to get down into the dirt and fight and scrap to get people to Jesus. That's what God has called us to do. That's what God has been leaning on me. Now, one of my favorite sayings that I've ever heard, and I want to try and live my life by this, is this. We will do anything short of sin to get people to Jesus. If that means sending them a text, then send them a text. If that means make a call, then make a call. If that means bring a ton of blankets, then bring a ton of blankets. What you're doing isn't relevant. Irrelevant. Just do something. Just link to someone. Once we link, then we can present the gospel. Then we can get people into the community with Jesus. And this is what the gospel says. It says that we've messed up in our lives. It's called sin. Now this sin actually removes us from the relationship that we have with God. Now, there isn't a single person on this planet that hasn't sinned. This goes for the history of the world. There hasn't been anyone that has lived a life without sin in the history of mankind, except for one person, Jesus, who is God's son. He was born of a woman and lived 
a life here on this earth and experience what it is to be human, but did it without sin. So here's what Jesus did. Jesus became the link for us to get back into community with God. Jesus did that by laying down his life for us. When he allowed himself to be crucified, he gave up his life. Remember, he was God in a man's body. He didn't have to allow the crucifixion to happen if he didn't want it to. So when he was up there on that cross, he became the substitution for us. He chose that. He took on every single one of our sins that we have made in the past and every single sin we will make in the future. He paid that debt for every single one of those sins. Now that ability to pay for our debt and forgive it is known as grace. And that grace is unending. There's no amount of sin that is greater than Jesus' grace for us. And he did that for each and every one of us. He listened to God, his Father. He loved people while he was here. He empowered his disciples and eventually all of us to spread his word. And he forever linked us to community when he laid down his life for us. The four L's we talk about every week are bigger than this church. They're how God loved us. What we want to do is just continue that. Now, for some of us, this is the first time you might be hearing about Jesus today. Or maybe today was the first time like you felt your heart leap when you started to hear more about him. Either way, the first step for you to become part of community with Jesus is by believing in him. It's that simple. You don't have to fill out a form. You don't have to jump through any religious hoops. All you have to do is simply believe that Jesus is the one that came to this earth and gave up his life for you. He came down to make you whole when you stand before God the Father. He came down so you could be in community with him. Now, if you are feeling this and you want to start this relationship with God, I want to pray with you. And I know this can be weird, so what I'm going to ask is that everyone in this moment pray with you because here at Akuo Church, no one prays alone. So let's everybody bow our heads and, and pray something like this along with me. Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for seeing me as worthy of your sacrifice. I know I've messed up in my life a lot, but today I want to invite you into my life. I want to follow you the best way I know how. Jesus, thank you for laying your life down for me. Because of this right now, I give you my life. Amen. Now, if you just prayed that prayer, if you just entered into the community of Jesus, I want you to step out on a limb for us today. If you're watching in the chat, just go ahead and type, I'm in community with Jesus. If you aren't watching live or you're in the car or something right now, just say that out loud. Just say, I'm in community with Jesus. Now, this is something that we will celebrate here at Akuo. If it's what God has created us to do, then we should be celebrating this, right? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to throw some fun emojis into the chat, celebrating the people that type that they are in community with Jesus. Now, if you aren't able to do that, then right now, wherever you are, I just want you to start clapping and hooting and hollering that somebody new just entered in the community with Jesus for the first time. Now, this is something that we will always celebrate here at Akuo, which is lives being changed, eternities being rewritten. There is nothing better than that. Now, no matter if you've been in community with Jesus for the last 60 years, the last like 60 seconds, and you want to be able to live out the purpose you've been given, then I want you to go ahead and, and pray with me right now. And so let's just go ahead and bow our heads again and just pray, just pray something like this with me. Jesus, thank you for being who you are. Thank you for giving me the example on how to listen to God, the example on how to love people, for empowering me to be a leader and for linking me to your community. Jesus, please help me live these things out in my life every single day. Help me reflect who you are to every person I come across. And we pray all these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, guys, thanks to all of you for being a part of our service here at Akuo. I want you to know if you need anything at all, don't hesitate to message us on our social media platforms, or you can go to our website, akuo.church, that's A-K-O-U-O.church, to contact us, or 
you can call or text us at 210-901-8785. Now, if you liked our service and you want to share it with someone, or if you missed any of the services we've done over the last few weeks, you can always go back and watch them on our YouTube channel. You can also listen to our services while you're in the car or on the go by just downloading our audio podcast. We're on every major podcasting uh, platform, which is Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and SoundCloud. While you're on any of these, you can subscribe, like, and rate our sermons. And by doing this, it, it just makes the algorithms like us so much more, and we can help spread the Word of God, which is just the good news of, of Jesus. Next, I want to talk about how we practice generosity here at Akuo. What we do is practice the biblical method of giving called tithing, which means giving a first fruit 10% offering to the storehouse, which is your local church. Now, we believe that when you trust God with anything in your life, there is blessing. And we are doing exactly that at Akuo. We are sharing our resources with the community around us. We were able to donate 25 turkeys to families in need of a Thanksgiving dinner a couple weeks ago while we were at CAM. It's 25 families changed because of what you guys give. Then this week, we were able to give mugs and hot chocolate to 150 senior citizens in need this Christmas season. Guys, we can't do any of this without your faithful tithing. Thank you for helping us link to our community. Now, right now might not be the best time for everyone. With everything that's happened this year, you might be struggling to make ends meet. And I don't want you to feel pressured to give to something that you can't give joyfully. And that's totally okay. Now, with that being said, if you need help with something, if you need help with a bill or food or anything, please reach out to us. We want to help you out. We want you to be linked to us during this tough time. Now, if you are able to tithe, the way you can do that here at Akuo is by going to our website, akuo.church, A-K-O-U-O.church, and when you get there, all you have to do is click on the giving link and follow the instructions. We also have our text to tithe option. For that, all you have to do is text AKUO, A-K-O-U-O, and the dollar amount you want to tithe to the number 77977. Now, when you do that the first time, you will have to sign up, but after that, tithing will be as simple as a text message. Now, if you don't want to give electronically, we also have our P.O. Box available if you would like to send your tithe through a check. For that, all you have to do is mail your tithe to P.O. Box 100 125 San Antonio, Texas, 78201. Now, right now, we are entering the last week of our season of linking. For the last event, we will be partnering with the San Antonio Food Bank this Friday, December 11th, from 7.30 to 11.30 in the morning. That day, we will be in the Alamo Dome parking lot distributing food to families that are in need. The link to sign up for this will also be in the chat and on our social media. You have to sign up to be a part of this. So please click on the link if you're interested in linking to our community. Now, one last thing. Each Wednesday night, we have a Bible study through Zoom. And I know we talk about it every single week, but we talk about it because it's amazing. It's this fellowship. It's this sharing of stories and, and the Lord's Supper like we did last week. That's what we do here at this group. Not only that, Abel is able to lead us in worship, and it's all kinds of fun. So if you're interested in being a part of this meeting, go to our social media and get it checked out. Okay, guys, that's all that we have for you today. I want you to know that I love each and every one of you, and I'm praying for you all, all week long. So before we go, let me just pray for you here right now. So Jesus, as everyone clicks off their browser, turns off their TV, and puts away their phone, I ask that you would be speaking to them. Jesus, I ask that you would help them follow you in the best way possible. I pray that you would give them wisdom to listen to you. I pray that you would give them empathy to love others. I pray that you would empower them to lead. Jesus, I pray that you would give them courage to link. And we pray all of these things in your mighty, wonderful, and loving name, Jesus. Amen. All right, guys, that's it. We'll see you on Wednesday at our Zoom group.